Years ago, when I first started making Vectorworks YouTube tutorials, one of my very first topics was this one, Extrude Along a Path. This is actually my third go at doing this. Over the years, I've learned more about it. It's still kind of mysterious in a lot of ways, but there's less things that are mysterious, and so I think it's worth revisiting this topic. And it's one that's really very powerful, but can be confusing the first time you use it. So hopefully you can find some use out of this. So first of all, what is an extrusion, right? We're all pretty familiar with that one. I can grab this uh, shape here, this profile of a cornice, and do Control or Command E, and extrude this up an inch or a mile. It doesn't matter. It's going to go in a straight line. But there's plenty of times when we want to be able to move things around corners, like trim at the top of a building or a cornice, uh, trim at the top of a room, or maybe it's a handrail, or all different kinds of things that we might want to use the same profile and wrap it around bends. And with the extrude along a path command, we can do that. It works best if you keep it in one plane. You can use the 3D polyline tool and change angles, change the Z axis or whatever. It seems to work best. You can do that, but it gets a little complicated pretty quickly, especially when you're like going downstairs. If you've got a, a handrail that has a clear top, if you're just doing a round circle, like a steel pipe that's being used to bend around a landing or whatever, it doesn't. you don't really know which way is up with a circle. So we can twist it around any way it needs to. But with something where there's a clear top and bottom, you can end up getting you know your brain uh, hurting really quickly here. And so I think it's just easier to break those up into smaller pieces. I mean, the carpenters are going to do that, right? There's going to be a newel post somewhere in there. They're going to, you know, you're going to go along the balcony and then down one flight of stairs to a newel post at the landing and then start a new uh, object that's going down the second flight of the stairs. So, you know, you know, there's no reason to try to do that in one fell swoop here. However, we can do that as long as we want if we're drawing in one plane. And we can use any tool. I'm going to come in here and be really careful about snapping to these corners using the automatic mode to do that. And I'm just using just the plain old... Um, uh, 2D polyline tool here, or the, the polygon tool actually here, and I'm just making sure I'm snapping right to those corners. And let me uh, scooch in over here so I can get to this last one. And it should be okay. Now, one of the things that can cause problems with this is, especially with beginners, you know, when we are drawing a closed shape, whoop, I extruded. Uh, when we are drawing a closed shape, we are going to go uh, one spot and then another spot. And then when we come right back to the original spot, one click finishes it. But when we're doing an open shape, we're going to go click, click, and then we got to double click to finish that shape, right? And a lot of times, I think newer users can end up putting little fish hooks and things on their line. And so if you try to do this operation and it gives you some kind of error, a message that it can't do it. More often than not, there's something wrong with your path and that you just need to fix your path. And I, you can go in with the reshape tool and try to find it and fix it, but I think it's usually just easier just to double click and or just to delete it and start over again uh, and, and not worry about trying to hunt down where the little flaw is because it doesn't take too long to kind of trace out your path. So you can trace it out straight on the floor in top plan view and then just move it after you've created it. That's fine too. Or you can draw it in 3D space and, and make sure you're getting your snapping carefully. Now I'm going to use this line first here. We're going to come back to this one. You notice that I've taken the fill out of this. That's just the attributes. It doesn't matter at all whether there's fill or not. If you leave the fill in it, it disappears when you do this operation. It's just using this line as a path. And you notice that it does have a direction. So as I drew this, I drew it going this way, right? I went from left to right, and I did with this one as well. I drew it on top of the wall, and then I used the, the control alt m to move it up in the z-axis a foot um, just to get it away so you could see what we were doing here. And I'm going to grab one of these profiles. I'm going to grab this one over here first and take this one and use this command to extrude along the path. And we're going to talk about some of the things that can go wrong here. So I'm going to grab these two shapes here and I'm going to go up to model this first time and I'll show you where it lives, extrude along a path, but I use the you know control alt x or command option x on the, the Mac and then we're going to go and say okay. And then one of the things you need to be aware of is that it's expecting that the last thing that you have drawn is your uh, path. But I, I drew the profile first and then the path so I have to flip them now here. So I'm going to flip that by clicking this little next button here and you'll see that the path that it's expecting is the orange one has the that has the heavier red uh, highlight instead of that one you otherwise it would try to take this shape and wrap it around this one and maybe that would work I don't know I'm gonna deselect this for now we'll come back to that and I'm gonna say okay and then we'll see what it's done so looks pretty good. It's certainly done that extrusion here, except you'll notice that it's facing the wrong way because this is my outside of my building here. That's my the trim that's going on the outside of the building and it's facing the wrong way. A couple of different ways to fix this. The easiest thing to do, I think, is just to undo the whole process here. And you can either just grab the one that's facing the other direction and do that. So now if I grab these two here and then I control Alt X and then we do it again. Oops, somehow I 
wasn't holding the shift key down. Here we go. Control Alt X, and then we're going to make sure that that's the path, and then I'm going to say OK. And now you see it is facing the correct direction. So now if I orbit around here, you can see that it's facing the outside of the building. So that was just, just flipping it. So you can undo this and mirror, just grab the mirror tool and just flip your, uh, your pattern over the other direction. Or you could just mirror or change the direction of your line. And you notice these little red arrows that are on here. Let me deselect and just grab the one that's from this little checkbox here, show direction. So that little arrow there that's showing the flow that I drew this in. I started here and I came to here. That little flow is being shown because I have checked this box. So if I want to reverse the direction, there's this button right here. I can just click on that and I can grab the original one, the wrong one, the one that didn't work the first time and do this whole operation again. And then if I make sure I'm grabbing the right path and then say, okay, now it is facing the correct way again. It's facing outward like I wanted it to do the first time. So that's the one way to fix it. There's a third way to fix it, and that's when you jump in to fix your profile. That's the one that I feel like is the most dangerous one to do. I mean, it works, but I like to get in and out of repairing that profile as fast as possible because that can get really confusing quickly. So I think it's better to fix it by making sure you're facing the right way uh, or you reverse your line. Those are easier ways to, to solve it. I'm actually just going to delete this right now and get it out of the way, and we're going to talk about this next one here. So I'm going to grab this other one, I'm going to grab one of these profiles. So we know if we drew it this way, we want this profile, right? If not, well, we know how to fix it, right? So I'm going to say Control Alt X, and I'm going to make sure that that's the profile. I'm going to say OK, and yes, we got the right one. So we're facing the right way, except we have a problem here. Let's go take a look and see what's going on. What's happening here, pan over here, is that you can see our trim is sticking halfway out of our wall, and it is buried halfway in our wall. That's not what we, what we want at all. So we want to make sure that this trim is not sticking out of the top of the wall here. You can see a little bit better from the reverse there, that it's buried in and it's sticking out too high. And the reason why it's doing that is it's driving it down right down the center of the shape. So right there, where we want it to be, we want this corner to be right there, not driving right down the middle. So if this were a circle, a piece of air duct or whatever, we wouldn't care about that. We would just draw a line where we wanted that circle to go, and then down the center of the circle would be, would be where the whole shape was drawn around. But we want this corner to be right there at the top of our ceiling and outside of our wall there, so we're not burying it into the wall. So the fix for that is to just double click into the shape here, and then you're given one of these options here to change the path. And we could do that now too. If we decided maybe I didn't want this return here, I just wanted this to stop, you know, without coming around the corner here, I could just edit the path at this point. But I, what I do want to do right now is jump into the profile. I'm going to say OK. And the nice thing about drawing these things in the top plan view now is that it's going to draw, that it's going to bring you back to the top plan view. You can draw these in any orientation that you want, side or front or right or back or whatever. Um, but I think just drawing them in top plan view makes this step very easy. And you can see the crosshairs of where the center of the object is. That's where, this is where our wall is right now. Our wall is right here with it running down the center. It's sticking up too high and it's buried in the wall. So we want to put this corner right there. So the green and red crosshairs, that's where the line is, where our path object is. So I have turned off the interactive scaling mode so I can grab it right from that corner. You don't have to do that, but I like it. It's easier to just snap right to that corner without having to make sure that you've missed. You know, I can zoom way in there and I know I got it right in that corner by grabbing it from the corner and snapping to that spot. And you can already see in the little plan view here that it's on the outside of the wall. It's right half of the way. And if we wanted to, we could go into the front view. I just hit the two key on the number pad and you can see, yep, it looks right. So here is the trim. Here's the wall right here and it, everything looks correct. So I'm going to exit the profile and sure enough, we've got it exactly what we want. So we have the top of this trim level with the top of the wall and all of the trim is in the room, not buried into the wall. So when I orbit around here, we can see that sure enough, we've got our, our nice handsome trim running ar around our wall. But that's not the only way you can do this. So let's go over here and take a look at this one. So there is another option that you can do. It's a little bit more kind of like the SketchUp Follow Me tool, if you've used that before, where you can draw the profile exactly where you want it to be and then tell it not to move it around. So it automatically moved it to the center here. Well, we can, if we put it in the right spot, we can have, we can avoid that step of jumping in and editing the profile. So what I've done here is I've just got a, a little wall object here where I just punched a hole in the door and then I traced a, just use again the, the poly, polygon tool, 2D polygon tool to trace this path around the opening. 
and this will disappear and open up again as soon as we do this operation. Then I have some trim that clearly has a you know a right side and a wrong side here. So this little step wants to be facing the the door as it goes all the way around. So I've put it aligned right down to the that corner right there where I want it to drive it around on my path. So if I select this, I'm gonna hold the shift key down, grab them both, and then let me center again. And then if I do that operation, control alt uh, X, and I can this this time make sure that, whoops, I gotta grab that, uh, that path again. And then I'm gonna check fix profile. So I'm gonna make sure that fix profile is selected. And what that, that means is it's going to fix it into position, not, not repair it, but lock it. So it's gonna stick it in this profile here. It's not gonna move it around. And then I'm gonna say, okay, and then it's gonna draw it perfectly around the doorway. And then you can look and see that, yep, that step-sided face is facing down and inward all the way around. It just took it, it went zoop, zoop, zoop. And there's another neat thing that you can do too. I'm gonna to just undo that and go into the, grab that uh, trim and go into the top view. And I'm just gonna bump this down a couple of feet. And you can do this exact same thing with an offset on here. So I can do that command, make sure I've got the path right, leave that selected and say okay. And now it's drawn this little bit of trim two foot away from the wall. So it's almost kind of like guiding it like, you know, G code or something. It's just going, all right, I'm starting from where I am and I'm going up however long that profile is and then I'm turning a corner and it's basically kind of drawing it with uh, an offset distance on there. I'm not sure why that's useful, but it's something that occasionally comes up and it's exactly what you need. So that is a, a great tool to use. So that's basically extrude along a path, but I want to show you some related things that are kind of also th things to be aware of, other ways that you can handle this. There's a tool here that you might have noticed before. It's really kind of not very well documented. There's the chain extrude tool that you find in the building shell tools. And chain extrude is in the documentation and the same example of the sort of awning has been in the documentation for like 12 years or so. And yet I think there's a lot of potential in this tool. It just has been a little neglected. So one of the things that's neat about it is it allows you to do complicated shapes with it. So for example, the example in the uh, the, the help menu, the, the manual is to draw a shape to be an awning and then to draw a second shape that is a bracket that is repeated intermittently. So you've got a continuous shape and you've got an intermittent shape like little steel brackets that are holding an awning out. So if I grab this guy, grab select both of them, and the order is draw the continuous one first or put it at the bottom and then draw the uh, intermittent one. But you don't have to do, do this just with awnings. This could be, um, you know, dental trim, cornice that has, you know, little blocks every once in a while or anything that, you know, picket fences maybe. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that you could do with this to make this tool wor work very well. One of the drawbacks of it is that it only works in top plan view. Well, I mean, you can do it in, in another view, but it's only going to draw it on the Z, Z floor, you have to move it around. So I'm gonna grab this tool and now it's waiting for me to go along and trace the outline of my little block here. And then what it's done is you can see here it is in 2D plan. And if I swip over, switch over to an isometric view, you can see there is my little awning and I'm going to move it off of the floor here, Control Alt M. And I think I made this little box uh, 12 feet tall. So 12 feet, yep, sure enough, there we go. So now I have my little espresso stand here, my little, uh, you know, drive through espresso box. And if you look underneath there, it has these little brackets that are dropped off intermittently as you go along here. Now, one of the things about this tool, this is a great, like, well, why don't we just use this instead? Well, it's kind of squirrely. It doesn't work vertically and I tend to have uh, difficulties with it. So one of the things that can go wrong, you notice I've, I've put this on another document because I, I went through the tutorial the first time and I went and used these exact same things, this exact same profile, and the awning wasn't being drawn. I don't know why. I just haven't used this tool enough to figure out why I was getting perfect brackets, everything was fine, but there was no awning. So it just has a few kind of like mysterious things, but then I cut and paste everything into a new document Here's an awning. So there's just some things about it that are a little unusual. And then you start messing with these numbers in here that should be easy to do, but then it can cause like really weird things to happen. Like suddenly the brackets are like 10 feet down and spaced really far apart, you know? So it feels a little unstable, but I just wanted to draw your attention to it because it is a really cool tool. And it is related to these kind of tools that are showing up here in the resource manager. So I came across this fixture wall accessories and we get these little guys that are 2D, 3D path plugin objects. So if we grab this one for example and I'm gonna just push this back out of the way and I'm gonna go up to the top plan view. This seems like there's a lot of, of power in this. Oh, I'm gonna make that active. 
And then I'm gonna go along here and just draw, I'll just do a corner there. And then if we look at this, we can zoom in here and like, look at what that made. It drew it right on, this, on, the, on the floor and it would have done that even if I was tracing some other object, but that's a pretty cool piece of trim. And it's using that same idea. It's drawing all of this step stuff here as the awning basically. And these are the brackets that it's dropping every once in a while. And you can see it's made a chain extrude object by the end of this. But it seems like there's a whole lot of power and potential in here for, uh, for how this works. So another more advanced option uh, beyond that maybe has some more potential as these tools develop beyond just the regular uh, extrude along a path tools. But hopefully a combination of these will make this whole somewhat mysterious process a little less confusing for you.